Welcome to Technoptics, my friends. So you might have built yourself a PC and you realize it makes quite a lot of noise. All the fans and stuff, that, especially if you've got lots of fans. Look at this. Three, six, seven, seven fans in here installed. And you might have even more. How do you configure the fans? And in this video, I want to show you some tips how you can make your PC quieter without losing any performance. And what are some of the tricks in actually doing the fan curves. And I promise you, I'm going to show you some tricks that you haven't seen before, hopefully. So whether you're a novice at tuning your PC fans, or maybe you just built your first PC, or you've built multiple PCs, hopefully I've got something for the both of you. Let's go. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out whokeys.com in the video description below. So I want to make sure that this actually works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my uh, decibel meter over here. And then we're just going to check like how loud is the PC at the moment. Roughly around about six inches or something like that from the PC. And let's see these numbers. around 43 or something like that. So let's remember that number and then we're gonna come back to it actually a little bit later. First of all, you wanna run the test again with actually um, a stress testing the CPU or the system. So highly recommend running Cinebench and let's run Furmark at the same time. We're gonna press start and we're gonna go to hardware info so we can monitor our temperatures as well. As you can see, we're stress testing. We're running about 88C at the moment, and we're pulling 219 watts from the socket, something like that. And then roughly about 44, 45 decibels. Bear in mind, in your situation, you might have different fans. You might have different speed fans, different case, everything. It might be louder or quieter for you. This is just to measure kind of my improvement over here or see it working. Because actually, even on this PC, these fans are quite quiet, even at st stock. I haven't adjusted anything. All the BIOS, everything is completely stock right now. And we're going to start to adjust it in a moment, but just to get some measurements. Now, as you can see, we're going a little bit higher in temperature and we're pulling 223 or 221 watts from the socket now so there's a bit of a voltage leak going on but i think my fans are pretty much maxed out anyway so it's not going to make that big of a difference so after three minutes now we have hit 92 degrees maximum and let's leave it at that i think that's going to be a pretty good measuring point there there's a few different ways how you can configure the fans and some people like to do it on software and some people like to do it in BIOS. I always recommend doing your fan curves in the BIOS just in case the software or Windows crashes or some, something happens inside your, your software. If it's done in the BIOS, you're still going to run the fan curve. If your op software is not up to date or it's got some kind of crash or whatever, your software can just you know not work, but BIOS will always run in the background and will always have the fan curves whether you're on Windows or not. So that's why we're going to do this in BIOS. Now my system over here is running the Gigabyte Z690 Aero D motherboard. If you've got a different motherboard, you still have the fan curves in the BIOS. And if you apply the same kind of ideas, you can still get the same results in terms of your, you know, loudness and speed and so on. Okay, once you're in your BIOS, find where is the fan curves. You know, different motherboards have different, you know, names for this. But in here we have Smart Fan 6. So now we're in the fan tuning and, and we can see all the fans and what's been plugged into the system. Now here's the first thing and uh, this is probably the biggest tip for you to take away. When you're plugging in your fans, a mistake, not so much of a mistake, it still can work, but a tip what you can do is don't plug all the fans together into a one big fan hub. And you're thinking, why not? Because that's just the easiest. I'm going to plug all the, you know, intake and outtake fans into a fan hub. I'm going to adjust it from one system header and then they're going to work the same. As fast as it's going to come in, as fast as it's going to go out. But here's the thing. If your fans, all of those three work exactly on the same fan curve and they run exactly the same speeds, then what happens is there's something called like resonance and harmonies that those fans start to make with each other. And it's basically how music works as well. And this is what they do in the concerts, for example. If you know in the concerts, they've got subwoofers in the front over there. If you adjust those subwoofers certain space from each other, 
or have them backwards, backfiring and front firing and have them on top of each other, what can happen is you can actually increase your output more than just two speakers outputs. If you have them run separately, let's say thousand watts and thousand watts and they make, I don't know, hundred decibels, hundred decibels. Now you can get more than 200 decibels by just adjusting those speakers right on top of each other. Just because sound waves start to run, they cross each other and they start to kind of amplify each other and you're going to get more decibels you know louder speakers which you know for a concert it's good but if you have this happen inside your pc that's not a very good idea so the trick over here is to have as many different fan headers as possible in your system fans so that all of those three next to each other aren't working exactly the same now the thing is you can just plug them into the one and just deal with it and not think about it but if you really want to fine tune which we're going to show you here in a moment you can actually reduce this noise levels did you know that apple did exactly that on their mac pro system do you remember the big tower mac pro 2019 which had the fans in actually none of those fans were running any time the same speed they were all kind of staggered a little bit so that they're not running the same speed meaning they're not creating the same decibels meaning the system is just going to run quieter what i'd recommend for ultimate performance is don't have them all the same how i have configured them at the moment are that the front two fans the upper one and the bottom one they're on the same header and then on the top there we have like left and the very right one on the same header and then this is different header on the back exhaust then those two aio side ones second header then we have third header for the middle one fourth header from those two intakes up and bottom one and then we have another uh, separate one for the middle fan in there so that's how we've configured and then plus the aio pump will go separately as well if your aio will come with just he one header from your actual system then it might not be the best you know noise to performance ratio if you just plug one into the you know cpu header because then the pump and the fans run on the same speeds running them separately and configuring them separately will be a better idea okay that out of the way what do we want to do first first of all we want to go to our fan headers and we're gonna select manual on all of them and what i want to do is i want to make sure that i'm gonna stop all the fan headers so that let's see is i can't remember if anything is plugged into system fan 6 but we're gonna be doing that on all of them as you can see, we're on 37 degrees at the moment. I'm going to turn all the fans off just so I can start to work on a kind of empty platform, if that makes sense. Manual. Now, bear in mind, when you're doing this, have all the panels on. At the moment, I won't have the panels on just so you can see the fans working or not working. But when you're doing it, have all the panels on because you don't want to adjust it and then put the panels on and then it kind of is different loudness, for example. Okay, now what you can see is all of my fans are off. So I'm going to start with the AIO pump because that's going to affect basically the CPU performance the most when there. Speed control manual, temperature input is the CPU. Fan control mode, if you have a four pin header, then make sure this is PWM. And if you've got a three header, then make sure it's voltage. And even though the motherboard can kind of configure it at auto, I've often found that they don't know what the heck to do with it when it's either one of them so you just tell it look it's pwm it's going to work the best or if it's voltage just tell it so all of my fans are actually four pin which are pwm so there we go we're going to hit this on pwm fan stop mode we're going to go disabled on this one we're going to go for a slope on here but now i'm going to start lifting up the threshold of the actual pump until i start to hear it Okay, you have to like kind of move around to actually hear what's going on. Okay, basically, you want to hear when you can hear the pump coming in. So to me, I can leave the pump roughly around 76% or something like that. And I I'm not even hearing it. Depending, sometimes you can even hit it like 100 degrees, 100% or something like that. So that's going to be very, very good. And I want the pump to go actually 100% before it even reaches 80 degrees. So I'm going to make a curve, something like that, because I want the pump to go there first. So as soon as we hit 73 degrees, I want the pump to kind of do a slope like that. So basically, it's going to stay there at this maximum hearing speed. So I can hardly hear the pump. The pump is very, very quiet, right? It's going to get the liquid moving around the CPU, which is the best, as long as it can and it's not going to go or like going higher like that so let it run there which keeps the 
whole system temperature or the CPU temperature quite down there. And then at 73, it's going to literally go 100% and then that's it. So basically the idea over here is to keep the fan speed as high as you can when it's still not audible. So wherever it's audible, kind of leave it at that point until you reach like about 60, 70 degrees or something like that. And then just move it up high, depending on your, you know, fan, uh, the pump uh, loudness, but move it up like that. That's done now. CPU optional. We don't have anything plugged in over there. So that's no problem. Next of all, we have system fan one. So I don't know which one this is. And the easy way to find out is if we are going to go PWM for sure. And we're just going to go full speed. Okay, so now my system fan one is the middle fan over there and then let's start to make a curve for it And we're gonna do exactly the same thing move these points as high as you can and I'm just gonna move it as high as I can Okay, now I'm gonna be listening just to that top fan over there. Okay, roughly about 66 percent is where I can't hear it and I know that the side fans are going to be exactly the same because the same fan fan I know how much noise they make so I'm going to leave it around 66 percent all the way till actually 68 degrees even 70 degrees actually is fine in here and then I want those fans to go 100 percent when we're hitting 93 degrees okay that's like when when it gets a little bit warmish so I'm going to make a quiet slope up like that that. okay so that's roughly around the slope we're going to be doing and then for the fan one we're going to be putting this on cpu input as well so it's going to be affecting the cpu input around that not system one so cpu input for the these uh there as well system fans system fan two is okay they're the side fans there the top side fans so we're going to be doing exactly the same thing maximum somewhere about 92 degrees there's no way i can make this exactly the same slope so that's the beauty of this i'm just making this lame same slope for this one as well so let's see if i can keep this at 66 degrees the middle one was 66 percent remember okay the top fans are going cpu temperature 64 percent until 70 75 degrees and then we're going to make a slope up slightly here as you can see all the way to there in the end there's going to be like a curve like that but most likely we're not going to be hitting that 70 something degrees most of the time so we're not going to see that slope so these are going to go cpu manual pwm fan stop disabled that's that so those top fans are configured now system fan 3 let's find out which ones are those okay that's interesting system fan 3 is this middle fan over there as you can see we're going to go back to manual and now the temperature input here i'm going to put system 1 so because i want the whole system kind of draw to be according to these fans um over there so that the middle fan will just throw into the system and control mode pwm fan stop mode enabled so this we're gonna want to kick in some nice air even 100 percent where we're hitting 82 degrees inside the system but we want the fan to run as high of a speed as possible until then so let's find out where's the good speed okay about 34 percent and i'm gonna give that 34 percent all the way till 70 degrees and then i'm gonna make a slope up slowly actually i'm gonna give that 35 percent like this like this let's make a nice smooth slope up there okay a slope like that that goes to the system so basically that's according to the system and then now let's try to move on to the next one system fan 4 pwm I'm gonna go full speed it's the top and bottom one and they make the most noise over there so we're gonna go manual those are gonna go according to the cpu as well because i want to make sure that when the cpu gets warm it just pulls in nice and cold air for the air to go out so let's say 35 percent 40%. As you can see, as we've adjusted all the fans, can you see how the CPU temperature has gone further down as, down as well? We've adjusted it and it's already down. We were getting like 40 and 50 degrees previously. Now look at that. Okay, about 41% there is fine. And you want this to be like 100% when we hit 88 degrees there. And then on our way there, we want to make a nice slope. Okay, there we go. Let's move on to system fan 5. 
Interesting, even though they're being the same fans, this back fan is actually much more quieter than the front fans. I think just because of those fan, um, can you see these uh, screw lines for the fans? Just because of their shape, they probably start to make a little bit of like a whistle noise, how the wind and the like blades go past there. Just because the holes in the back are a little bit different, it makes a different noise, it's not as loud at all. So we're gonna go manual, we're gonna go system here because we're gonna throw the like hot system air out there as much as possible. PWM, yes. Okay, and then let's start to make the slope. When the system, actually, when this, we're gonna go this as CPU as well, so that the hot air, well, actually, I'll, I'll just put it at CPU. Okay, at 52%, I'm still not hearing it. Okay, I can leave it at about 69% or something like that, and then have a nice curve up over there. I want it to go higher a little bit faster when uh, I don't think the system should ever be 86 degrees or something like that. So we're going to make a nice curve up like that. But now it's going to push the air out without making any noise, especially like from the GPU and so on. So now that's that's all done. Okay, now the fan configuration is done. Make sure you hit F10 to actually save this and we're gonna go out of the BIOS back into our system. And then now we're gonna test how much different the system's gonna be running and how much noise is it gonna be making. So I'll put these back. Since doing the first test, it's been a little bit hotter. It's about 30 degrees Celsius now in this room, which is very, very hot as well previously. As you can see, the package is actually idling to me a little bit high degrees just because the environment is, is quite high. So it's only about 13 degrees over ambient, which is not bad for the cooling. See, they, they dropped to 35 as well so now um let's see the idle kind of temperatures here now or uh, decibels so as you can see we're idling now about 41 decibels and then now let's put this stress test on and let's see what we're doing at maximum Can you see that now? We're roughly about 40 or 41 dB at 100% utilization of the CPU. Let's see in about three minutes, how well are we gonna be doing? Okay, at this point, we're roughly about the same point as we uh, stopped the test on previously. And I think we were at 92 degrees. Right now we're at 90 degrees and we're pulling about the same wattage from there. But look at the decibel meter. We're about 43 or 44 decibels compared to the 44, 45. And bear in mind, by that time now here i have it's been about an hour when i filmed this video there's been a pc behind it as well that's been recording all of this stuff uh, that's been constantly producing heat in this room so there's a lot more heat in this room and in worst case our cooling performance is absolutely the same but now it's actually much more quieter especially when we're on the idle side of the things our system is just so much more quieter i'm actually impressed about the idle noise can you see we're about 40 decibels which is actually three decibels uh, quieter than before and bear in mind there's a lot of things that are making noise here as well so to me like when I'm this far from it I can hear just a little type of thing so the PC is not making noise like most of the time so the most annoying thing what you can do as a creator or if you're doing anything else if you're editing and your CPU's temperatures go high like just momentarily what happens is all your PC starts going that's when your fan curves are literally like linear and that's that's when it happens we want to keep like the fans as maximum of a speed as quietly as they can as long as they can and then do a little curve in the end over there when they need to kick in and actually cool the system down because then most of the time your PC won't hit those high temperatures unless you're exporting or whatever and even then the fans are going to kick in if they need to but it's still going to keep the system cool as long as you can especially the AIO cooling. So now even with our 12 900k over there as you can see we have better temperatures we have a quieter system and you can do the same for your system. So hopefully this video was helpful for you to understand how to configure fans, how to do it, how I'm doing it, what's the best way of doing it. If you have any other tips, let me know in the comment section below. But that's uh, what I do and that's what I found to working the best. And if you're at this point of the video and you're wondering, how can I build myself a PC? I'd like to buy or build myself a PC, but I don't know what to get for my budget. I've got 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 and 2,500, as well as $5,000 PCs. Create the PCs for you. Check them out in the links in the description below you can find the videos what parts to get and i've got build guides and everything on the channel for you to get the helpful tools to actually build the system and then get it working and just you know use it and so on so feel free to check them out
As always, likes and subs and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.